Hi everyone, I hope you're having a great day. Well, today I'm back here at my girlfriend's You Pick Flower Farm to give you a full tour of what she has going on this time of year. It's mid-October, the dahlias are in full glorious bloom, and I'm gonna show you around each variety that she's growing. And then I'll show you two other rows, cause she still has things like celosia, her Mexican bush sage, different amaranths, and you can kind of get more of a full scope of what she's growing here on her flower farm. So let me show you exactly what you see when you first enter her property. She has her eucalyptus there on the right, and then the dahlia field really greets you right away. So you can see she's growing multiple kinds of eucalyptus. Here in 6B out in the field, eucalyptus generally does not overwinter for us. She did tell me that she has two houses with eucalyptus in them, and sometimes they overwinter, and sometimes she tends to lose certain varieties. So it's really bright and sunny today, so I hope you can see all right. But wait until you see all of these amazing dahlias. Now, my girlfriend is Amish, so is her entire team. So I'll be sure not to get them on camera today, but I wanna give them full credit for the absolutely phenomenal job that they do. Because when you see how healthy these plants are for mid-October, you're gonna to wanna to give them a round of applause just like I do. This is one of my all-time favorite dahlias. She's called Innocent. Here we have a spectacular row of Nicholas. And let me get a close up of Nicholas for you because it's one of my favorite light orange dahlias. Now that's a handsome dahlia right there. Here we have Gonzo Grape. This one is called Hillcrest Profusion. These two rows have Natalie G and I'll give you a close up on their blooms a beautiful peach color on Natalie G. Very similar to Natalie G, we have Jowie Winnie. Here we have Sweet Love. Here we have Cornell Bronze. Here we have two gorgeous rows of Spartacus. Now these next four rows are filled with all Bridezilla. Let me give you a closer look on her because she's one of my favorite white dahlias. Just phenomenal. These next four rows are Snowball. These are a smaller white dahlia. And here's the fresh one for you. Its center is open at this point. I just wanna take a brief pause here to do a slow pan so you can kind of get a sense of how big these fields truly are. Now she does have a huge team of people out here helping her. So don't think that she's doing this all alone, but doesn't she just do a phenomenal job, her and her team? And there are some people here right now cutting and bunching the dahlias. These ones here, she has labeled as Big Fluffy Orange and then Big Fluffy Peach, but I'm unsure on if that's actually the variety or if she's just not sure on the variety here and so she's labeled them in this manner. Her rows of Cafe au lait are looking absolutely phenomenal. I do see a guy I'm sure she could live without down here. <laughs> and probably lots of us are struggling with bad bugs this time of year. This row here is the ever popular Thomas Edison. I bet many of you are growing that one in your garden. And over here we have Purplicious. This beautiful one is called Peaches. So I think the main question from the other video was, does she dig her dahlia tubers? Yes, she does dig them. She does have a tuber sale. I believe it's in May. I'll put all the information in the description section. And you wanted to see her staking system. So let me show you that. So you can see she's going with four foot T posts. She's running a crossbar here. Then she has a layer of floral netting low to the ground. I'd say that's at about 20 to 24 inches. And then she follows it up about 12 to 18 inches with twine. 
All right, let's go over to some other rows. So I'm not personally familiar with this variety, so forgive me if I pronounce it wrong, but my girlfriend here has it labeled as Veronique. If someone could please correct me on the pronunciation if I'm incorrect here, I would really appreciate that. But this one is really lovely. Here we have Miss Delilah. Here we have Pumpkin Spice. This one's called Milo. I'm not sure on this variety. Does anyone recognize it? Here's a closer look at one. Here we have Gets Crazy, and I'll definitely be cutting a few of these to take home because they're just so fun in fall. This row here is called Karma Red. Let me get a close-up on one for you. And then right over here next to me is Hot Red, which I always think this is funny too. Hot Red is really orange. <laughs> Why do they do that to us? Here we have Mardi Gras. This row here is called Hey Day. We have Cornell Orange here, and then back behind it is a full row of Tutti Frutti. Here's a close-up on Tutti Frutti. That sounds like a good name for a breakfast cereal. Now we're coming up to a few rows that I showed you the other day. So we have Buttercup. Right next to Buttercup, we have Sweet Suzanne. And then we have this phenomenal light pink dahlia called Karma Pink. I absolutely love Karma Pink. We've pretty much seen most of the dahlias now, so let me take you over to some other parts of her field. She still has things like Mexican bush sage, celosia, some perennials still in bloom. I saw a little bit of straw flower, and of course she has amaranth this time of year. And even though a lot of things are done blooming for the season, I'll still try to give you a scope of the area that she grows on, even though it's kind of done for the season. There's still lots of celosia rose to see here. I think I'll probably go ahead and pick some of this. I did get a bucket to go ahead and pick at least one bucket full of flowers from her. What you're seeing here is two beautiful rows of Dusty Miller. Back behind that, we have some Ageratum. It looks like behind that we have some yarrow that has petered out, and then the red there in the distance is her amaranth. Here are her rows of Lysianthus. Lysianthus is a different cost from all the other flowers here on the UPIC, and if you've ever grown Lysianthus, you can understand why. Let me give you a close-up of some that are still looking great. It looks like we have a volunteer celosia in here. So back here in this field, we have a few different types of gomphrina. We have some amaranth, and then we have lots more rows of celosia. Here's a look at the field from the very back. You can see this is where she had her rows of zinnias, which are definitely done this time of year. They always succumb to powdery mildew in our area, but I hope this too gives you a scope of just how big things are back here. Now I'm over in an area that borders her store. Her shop is right here where she has her coolers and all her dried flowers, but look at these beautiful white cosmos dancing in the wind. I know she usually has a lot of zinnias over here, and I just think because of the time of year, there's not too much going on in terms of color. But this is a nice homey garden and a real cottage garden type of feel. She's got just a bit of sea holly left over here in her perennial gardens still getting a nice secondary or maybe even a third flush off this fever view. And now check out her row of Mexican bush sage. <laughs> now I'm really in heaven. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tour of my girlfriend's You Pick Flower Farm. Like I say, I'll put all her information in the description box. And until next time, happy gardening. 
Bye.